Over the last 10 years, we saw a new market emerge and then explode and then dominate the supplement space. Pre-workouts, they were almost non-existent not that long ago. Now it's one of the biggest uh, money makers in the supplement business. Here's the problem. How do you know which one works for you or which one's best for you? And what's the point? Why take a pre-workout anyway? Well, here's the deal. Find a pre-workout that maximizes usable focus. Everything else is pretty much a waste. Compounds that help with recovery or blood flow or whatever, you're looking at splitting hairs. But focus, that's where you can really get your money's worth. But not just any hyper focus, focus you can use. So when you look at a pre-workout, see if they balance stimulants with compounds that give you more of a calmed effect. Calming focus is uh, energy is where you can apply the most strength, the most power and get the best results. Not the hyper jittery stuff that you get from some of these other pre-workouts. So pay close attention. Does it have stimulants? And does it have compounds that help balance those stimulants out? That's what you want to look for. Mm. What, what exactly did you use in pre power when you formulated that? What oh. what compounds did you use for that? That that was the biggest consideration, right? So caffeine is the 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 most well known stimulant. It's the best tolerated. It's the one that it produces the best just broad range mm. results. So if you look at all the stimulants on the market, caffeine you know it's found in nature. Um, it, it's got, again, it's got the best safety profile of all stimulants. You got to be careful. Um, so caffeine was in there. That's of course, number right. one, we need that stimulate effect, something that's going to that hone in and amplify the central nervous system. You get immediate strength gains from that. So studies will show that if you just give someone caffeine, they're a little stronger, they perform a little better, but can be easily overdosed, right? To the point where you're jittery and it's like interrupting your performance. Right. Or just, just, you could just have caffeine. So people are like, what's a good pre-workout? Well, I mean, you could just take caffeine, but if you really want to take it to the next level, what you want are compounds that help balance it out. So there's things like lion's mane. There's something called neurofactor. Um, there's other compounds. Bayo, Bayoab is good. Uh, Bacopa is good. And what they do is they enhance focus without the stimulatory effect. And if anything, they have a calming effect. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't mean it cancels out the caffeine. It actually makes the caffeine more usable. So uh, like, and we've all experienced this where we had a cup of coffee or an energy drink and it was too much. So we just kind of felt anxious and aimless almost. Like I'm not even more productive. I'm just anxious now. Um, that's what you don't want. What you want is this really, and we all know what that feeling is like, right? You feel focused, you feel like you could, you could be strong, but you don't feel like you're out of breath. Like yeah. you, you feel like you can have a productive workout. Like that's why you want a pre-workout that understands that and balances things out. Unfortunately, what we have on the market are just stimulant upon stimulant uh, based pre-workouts. They really you want you to feel that rush uh, for the yeah. most part, all these other products yeah. when in fact, just balancing it out and like yeah, doing that in a way where it can sustain that type of focused energy a bit longer too, I think is a big consideration. Yeah, or, or right, because then you get this nasty crash afterwards. Exactly. Or they throw in like amino acids and stuff like this helps with recovery. Like however many branched amino acids you get from a pre-workout, a scoop of pr a protein powder is going to give you more than that. So, you know, that kind of stuff is, like I said, it's splitting hairs. Really, it's you want that calm, balanced focus that's what's going to give you the best performance uh, from a pre-workout. Speaking of protein powders, is uh, has the pre-workout market uh, eclipsed that, or is it is is protein powder number one and then pre-workout number two? What's the what's the leading supplement that's purchased? Yeah, those are the two bangers, right? No, pro pro creatine protein, would be protein there too. powders are the top. Is it? That's I knew it was, but in is, terms of total volume, yeah, yeah. Profit wise, okay, margins on pre-workouts yeah. are amazing. Because they can get all crazy. What are you with right them now? And, Does pre workout have a pro no 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 pre workout same product? Yeah, you, you can look at like the, the top selling uh, segments of the supplement market. Yeah, um, fat burners. That's another one that's got huge margins. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, fat burners are similar in the sense that people they design them to be felt, not necessarily to work. Oh, Doug broke into the matrix. Oh yeah, look at that. You broke uh -huh. the computer there, Doug. On the <laughs> screen there. Oh, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, they just want to make your like skin a bit warm and hot. Yeah. Like, remember oh, well, remember when you found out the, the that hustle with the uh, niacin? I remember yeah. when I first pieced that yep. together, like the supplements, you're like, man, this is working because you're sweating like five yeah, minutes later. My face is like, all red. so well. <laughs> Do you know, did, <laughs> you guys full of did you guys know that that was an old school way of lowering your cholesterol? Really? Mega dosing niacin? Huh. 
It, why? It, why? This I don't, awful. I, don't, I don't remember why. Maybe Doug can look it up. Doug, can you look up uh, niacin for Wait, cholesterol? Wait, one thing at a time. He's trying to figure this thing out for <laughs> He's not going to figure this <laughs> out. He's not going to figure it out. Well, He's no, I mean, how do you find this? I'm Andrew, can you help him out? Yeah. Well, I'm looking at the top supplements. Creatine. I don't know if these are ordered in the order of uh, purchases. Creatine, protein, uh, omega-3s. Okay, I I need to find a better page. Yeah, here. it's gonna be uh, be tough because that like there's also the health wellness market. Well, you know, you know, you know what makes this tough is there's so much marketing around it that you're getting bombarded yeah. with, yeah. with like yeah. they're all biased ads. Yeah. Like you know, what I'm saying like this is the number one whatever. It's, <laughs> it's a like, specific supplement yeah, brand. Yeah, click here. Yeah, for this supplement. dot com says this. Yeah, so, yeah, probably uh, hard to find a non biased article yeah, on the used, first ten pages. Niacin so, used to use to lower cholesterol. In fact, uh, there was a practice where you mega dose niacin and then go in the sauna. Damn, that sounds like a heart attack wow. waiting to happen. Look at this. Niacin can lower triglycerides by 25% and raise HDL levels by more than 30%. Now, what's crazy about this is people don't use it anymore because niacin has this side effect of like making your skin red and, and, and temporarily and kind of making it tingle. Mm -hmm. But also, niacin's hella cheap, super cheap. You can buy niacin over the counter for nothing. Yeah. So I'm I'm positive that's the reason why it's not marketed. Because those are big numbers. Yeah. Trig triglycerides are, by 25%. Why are we not using that still then? Because it's Sal? cheap, nice and cheap as that's hell. why it's effective and cheap, so we don't use it. Anymore. Well, they're not going to advertise. They're not going to push it. You know, that's that can't be why. I dude, mm. I used to train a cardiologist. Told me all about nicin and saying, "Oh, this is an easy way to to fix your blood lipids or whatever." Yeah, yeah. interesting. But that being said, you've all, have you have you guys ever mega dose nicin? See, what yeah, that it's like? horrible. That's a terrible feeling. No, I've never not. mega dose. To. I've had enough to where it's like you you'll sweat just sitting still. Dude, I took a fat dose and I was working. This is when I was managing Santa Teresa. And I started feeling like hot. I'm like, oh, what's going on here? But I didn't pay any attention. And one of my one of my sales guys comes up to me, and goes, "You're all red, bro." I'm like, "What?" And I looked in the mirror, and it looked like I got like crazy sunburn everywhere. Oh wow! Yeah, but then it lasted like like yeah, forty five yeah, minutes. Off, or wears or off, or whatever. Yeah, right? It kind of went away. It, is it? I mean, can you obviously you could probably overdose? You can overdose on almost anything. So is it? Your body flushes it out. Oh, it does. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not super dangerous or anything like that. So but, weird. But anyway, back to the pre workout thing. To give an example, uh, theanine is an amino acid that has been no shown to have some anti-anxiety kind of enzyolytic effects. Combining theanine with caffeine makes it so much more effective. Yeah, it gives you this longer energized feeling, and it's much more focused. So there's a good comment. There's a good example of something that balances out the caffeine because everybody thinks you need to just stack on top of the caffeine more stimulants. That's not going to give you better performance. It'll give you crappier performance. You want calm focus. <clears throat> so when you're looking at pre-workout, look for ingredients that will balance out the stimulant. You'll get the best effect, the best performance, and you'll feel the best, you know, doing something like that. So, mm. All right, today's giveaway is the RGB bundle, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we post it. Drop a good comment and subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. So do all those things, and if you win... We'll let you know in the comment section. We're also running a sale right now on some correctional exercise pain relieving programs. MAPS Prime is 50% off. MAPS Prime Pro is 50% off. And the bundle that includes them and discounts them is an additional 50% off. So if you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I got to tell you guys about uh, the weekend. My, has your... Have your kids ever ratted you out to your, your wife? Have they ever done that? Yeah, Max actually did. <laughs> did he yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, so. he does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally he did ratted. this weekend on me, actually. He got you too? Yeah, yeah. I got ratted out because I took him to the movies. And you weren't supposed to? No, 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 no. I, I let him have some gummy bears and popcorn. <laughs> and so, you know, and of course, like, now he, he ratted me out on the way in. And then, so he ratted me out to the movie people. And then he ratted me out to Wait, how did he do that? Well, we, I, I, I bought them at a, like a gas station. And then I, oh. then I put them in like a little Ziploc bag. So obviously I'm not gonna give my son a full thing of gummy bears. And I had my niece with, I had Jerry's daughter with me. And so I, I split them up, right? And gave them bunnies. And I said, keep these in your pocket until we get into the <laughs> thing. Don't say anything. I said, so we're like in line and I'm like trying to pay things. And my son's like, hey, we're gummy bears. We're the gummy bears. We're the gummy bears. So I'm like, shh, we'll get them when we get in the movie theater. Yeah. Shh, quiet. Be patient. Yeah. Hey, do you remember that when you were a kid? Your dad looks at you, he's like, you're 12. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm 14. Yeah. Yes, you are. Oh, you're, yeah. 12. You're, like, huh? you're 12 today. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All to save a dollar fifty. Yeah. <laughs> but then you feel bad about it. Like, I don't want to look like I'm 12. Yeah. 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 No, we, we were, we, you know, we kind of have to watch uh, Aurelius' diet here and there because he, he could develop some gut issues. And acai bowls, he loves acai bowls. I love them too. 
But they put peanut butter in them. They'll put bananas on them, granola. Those are three things he's not supposed to necessarily have. So anyway, just, you know, I love bonding with him over that. So I took him to get acai bowl. And I was just thoughtless. So they included the bananas and a couple of things, right? So we're eating them. And as we're eating them, I'm like, oh, shit. I forgot. Damn it. So I'm trying to eat the stuff he's not supposed to eat, you know, <laughs> but he still ate some or whatever. Uh-huh. So then we get home and we're hanging out, you know, around the di- dinner table. And he goes, Mama, oh, Papa got acai bowl so good. She goes, was it good? He goes, oh, I love the bananas and the crunchy parts. And she's like, oh, really? Oh, she's like, you like those parts? I'm looking at her and I'm laughing. I'm like, come on, buddy. Stop, stop the details. Yeah, dude. You're ready me out right now. Uh, oh, kids' man. brutal honesty at that age is so is so funny, man. They have no filter whatsoever. I know. What was that show? What did the, the Bill Cosby used to do? He did the uh, darnest, kids say the darnest things. What was it called? Oh, that was Did they continue that on the with somebody else? Huh? Uh, yeah, I think that was the title of the show. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, right. Kids say the darnest things. Is that what it was, Doug? Kids say the darnest things? Yeah, I mean, I'm looking it up. It yeah. was a great. That was a great show. It was uh, really good. I, yeah. I, I think it's so they, unfiltered. I, I thought I saw somebody else doing it not that long ago, and so I think they might have continued it on. I thought I saw a, an ad for it, and it was a different host. And I thought, oh man, I would totally watch that. Yeah. Until He's, they say well, something to embarrass you. Yeah. I remember when well, I was, that was back in 1995. Oh, was it? So there, there, there hasn't been an evolution of it. I thought I saw. Um, What's his name? Who does Family Steve Feud? Harvey? Yes, I thought yeah. I saw Steve I Harvey so doing too. it. Oh, I did do so. I did see that. Dude. Right, he's, okay. he's great with interacting with kids and stuff. He's yeah, yeah. Funny. I thought I saw him doing it. Uh, I guess not. Huh? Yeah, like I said, they can embarrass. Like I, like I remember my brother walked up to a, a overweight lady. Oh, you're pregnant. You're having a baby. Oh, and my God. mom's like, no. And I'll pull on him real quick. So oh, embarrassing. Yeah. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, God. So awkward oh, moments. Just, yeah. I've had a few of those. I'll just tell people, your breath smells. Like, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, let's go over here, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, I mean, there was kind of two moments. Like, so I took the kids by myself to Arizona and uh, for this gymnastic tournament. And it's like, man, just the organization of the whole thing in the event is very confusing because they give you a lot of information very last minute. And so you just have to show up and uh, try and like troubleshoot your way through and lean on other parents to tell you, I got to go over here and do to this event. And then I only have like a half an hour break in between this and that and the other. And so the first one was like, Everett was up in like, I couldn't tell where his flight group was. He was just like kind of in the mix back, you know, behind everybody. There was like a bunch of kids out on the floor and I'm sitting there trying to like, um, log in to get, so there's this thing, it's like a score where you, where you're able to, um, log into this website. It tells you like real time, all their scores and gives all the athletes you connected to them. Um, and so I was trying to like sign them up for that and like on my phone. So I had it on there and I had like a window of like 20 minutes because his group was going to go up and, and compete. And it turns out they competed early and I'm on my f- stupid phone, like trying to set this whole thing up. Everett competes. I don't even see his first event uh, and he just was crushed and he was looking over and just was like, do you even look at, you know, me performing and like, he didn't qualify on that one for nationals, which he was trying to do. Oh, it's it, totally your fault. I too. was like, <laughs> dude, like you want to talk about like taking a knife and just uh, douche. Uh, like I felt so bad. And, and on top of that, we go, cause there's like awards in between like each one of the events and like you go to this other room. And so I'm sitting there with all these other parents and they go in another door. So they're all in the back behind the stage and I'm waiting there. I'm waiting there. I'm waiting there. I'm waiting there. He never gets called up. And I'm just like, dude, what, where is he? Dude, I cannot miss this. Did I miss that? Like, oh my God, he will do, like never trust me <laughs> to like watch anything. And uh turns out that uh, they just, they, they shuffled and missed his, um, cause he was the only kid. Cause he actually had to compete with the group of girls because they didn't have like for that first group, they didn't have like uh, boys, his same age, uh, competing that day. And so like, they just kind of shuffled past it. And so he leaves and he's just like, Oh, they didn't call me. And then, you know, was just super upset. And I'm like, Oh my God, bud, we, we got to get a win here. Like, let's, and so I was like, I'm going to go talk to him. And he's like, don't talk to him. Don't talk to him. He's getting all upset. And I was like, okay, here's what we're going to do. Uh, you know, uh, we're going to go figure this out over an ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and I never pull that move. And so he's just like, oh, yeah, let's do that. You know? <laughs> so we go over there. We get ice cream. He's like, oh. He's like, yeah, I don't know. It's not so bad I'm, anymore. You know, I'm a little bit less stressed now, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, good, bud. I, I want you know, want you to do well in these other uh, events. And 
like I, I was just like, you know what? I got to go. I got to go like ask them. I was like, no, don't do it. I go back in, ask them and then find out like they just like literally shuffled past his paper. They're like, oh, we can, we can announce him right now. I'm like, no, no, no. He's not in any kind of mood for that. And so anyway, uh, I ended up getting his uh, medal for him and then gave it to him. And it, I've learned from past mistakes that that means a lot, you know, like oh, them the just like the medal is like, of course. So I got it, you know, and I was yeah. like, okay. And then the whole rest of the day was great, but I was like, I can't let this be a domino that's going to like destroy, like, because it was 7.30 a.m. is when we started, which was just the warm-ups and practice. And then they could start to compete at like 9, all the way till 9.30 at night. Oh, my All the God. way through. And you're just I had like the whole half time? hour breaks, like here and there. I don't even know when. I just, and you're like, just in there the whole time? Yeah, just in there the whole time. And, and it's just bleacher? Just chaos. Any yeah. cool parents? Is everybody deuce? There's a few. Like, I, I, I definitely would... Every now and then, try and find them. I'm like, hey, wh how's everything going? Like, where am I supposed to be? Yeah, <laughs> that kind of thing. And I had one real nice lady, Jenny. She helped me out a lot. Uh, but uh, it was a cool trip, dude. It, it, and then they got into chaos and stuff later. Like, they, man, they had so much. How do you handle after. eating and stuff for them when they're doing that? Are they do you, do they eat or are they supposed to eat real light because they're gonna do these competitions? Like, and do you bring food because you can't leave, right? Or yeah. Well, it was so early too, and like I was trying to get up early for breakfast and like dragging them up, them up was an issue because Ethan's real teenager, mm. you know, guy these days, he just wants to sleep till noon. And so I had to like pull him up and, and get everything moving. So we just had like, you know, a breakfast sandwich and, and I had brought a shit ton of snacks, like, like protein bars and, and beef jerky and like all that kind of stuff. And then, um, yeah. So I just, uh, any chance I got, we actually were able to get, tacos because there was a place like right in walking distance so i was able to do that for lunch but like yeah it was i mean anything like they just need like little bits it's not a lot of food like little bits of food and snacks you know what's interesting about stuff like that because uh, uh grappling tournaments are like that you'll show up and then you get kind of this rough idea but you're there all day um is that it plays a role in the people that win in the sense that like you have to be able to be able to hang out all day long, not overtire yourself with nerves. Cause this is what would happen to me in a tournament is I'd be so like hyped to go, but then I didn't go for like five hours. But meanwhile, I'm watching other people go and I'm getting even more high. And I, by the time that my match would show up, I was like, <clears throat> my, I was already fatigued just from all of that. And it plays a role. It actually plays a role in how well you perform. Like, oh, can yeah. you go Absolutely. and be there all day and do nothing all day and watch other people compete and be in that state of mind and then go and perform your best. Yeah, you don't want to have any lulls. You want to kind of keep stoking it's it. Crazy. So that's what I was trying to do. So this might sound a little ignorant, but you brought up um, Everett competing against the potentially girls. I would think that- He didn't compete Everett. against them. He just uh, basically by himself. Oh, okay. So I thought they were going to potentially group him with girls, you said. In a, in well, a, they, 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 yeah. So for the trampoline section, like yeah. they they had the girls competing. He, he went, but yeah. like was just- competing for his own oh uh, the reason why i was saying that it brought that up is because i you know I, I start after you said it i started thinking like oh uh, for the initial reactions oh that's not fair but then i thought you know that's probably one of the few sports where the girls are probably better than the guys up to a certain age in that age range yeah, yeah. until like 12 or so I yeah think. okay so i was gonna ask you if you can see that and is there is there like a it would also depend on the event uh, yeah because at the higher levels, uh, obviously, rings and pummel horse and stuff like that. Yeah, the more, the more strength-intensive ones, for yeah, sure. but then, like, the... You know, yeah, but there's got to be a certain age where, like, a majority of the events, probably girls would probably do much better at. And then Interesting. At, at, yeah, think about that, right? I would think, like, floor-type yeah. stuff, right? I would think mm -hmm. even the... Uh, what, what do you call the the race and then spring? The spring yeah, one the that tumbling, I see the... tumbling. Yeah. The tumbling, mm -hmm. like... So can you see that or do you know, I mean, can you speak to that at all? Like from what your experience? Yeah. I think the, the younger girls, um, yeah, I think 10 and under, I think it would be comparable at least if not like some of them would probably excel just because of the body awareness. And I think like sometimes like you could see how girls are a little bit more, uh, in tune with their proprioception and their balance and all that, mm. which plays a big factor. But when it comes to then adding that on top of the strength, I think that's where 
you know, when they get older, it, it shifts. Yeah, you probably see. You, you probably see. Uh, my guess would be girls probably are better around their young teens, 12, 13, 14. You start to see maybe a little bit of a divide, and then as in they get into late teens, early twenties, well, you probably there's see a them. lot of physics involved too because yeah. the g gymnasts. Uh, this is interesting. I watched this uh, video on how gymnasts have evolved over time, <clears throat> and um, they they became smaller and smaller and younger and younger for certain events because it's been official to be small yeah and then another reason why i think the girls would probably dominate and do so i mean think about this how many how many sports are like that name it name me another sport where you can think of up to like what 10 11 yeah or even oh, young soccer. what soccer. So young girls like five six seven and young boys, where, five, six, what, what? yo at that age at five and six seven you don't think so well five oh may um, like young, young, yeah, young five, can, are, do they even score goals at five not really i mean when you start getting six seven eight years no bro your soccer, no, not even. Do they start to they start to diverge even then? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Show name another sport. I'm trying to think of another sport. That's what's so it, very unique about gymnastics in comparison to in terms of the standout athletes. You know, like mm -hmm. uh, if you're gonna have like the key players like and stand out, and if you have if you're gonna compare apples to apples with like you know boys girls, and I, I always see like boys. Yeah, because you'll hear you'll hear women who are like who've been athletes their whole lives. They'll talk about the moment when. Where they, they could com they were able to play with like compete with the boys play with the boys and then there was a period where they just like mm -hmm. okay there's a, there's a split here yeah I don't know what that age is though. I would imagine why well, it it's close to nine ten I would say I well I mean playing with and actually be I'm saying like in gymnastics there's probably eight nine ten years old there's probably a lot of girls that actually are much better than the guys. I wonder there's if, a difference between saying much better and then being like girls now, that are admitting that they I think it depends on the event, but yeah, I think you're, you're probably right. Is there a selection bias though? Because are I think uh, are more young girls in, uh, yeah enrolled in gymnastics than boys? Yes, I think that's the thing. I think when you look at young ages, I don't know what I would cut it off nine, ten. But I think that boys tend to play certain sports, girls tend to play other sports. And that's where you see the chain, the difference. But in terms of general athleticism and strength and power and that kind of stuff, uh, then you know, once once they get into the early teens, then you really see a big difference. Yeah, I forget if it's freestyle gymnastics, but there's two different uh, types. And so this is like the TNT, so it's like trampoline, tumbling, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I, I think that um, it, I think that you do see it like like a lot more girls like signing up for that. Um, and that's been the case for a long period of time. But now I think there's a lot more boys because of things like parkour. And, oh, that, yeah. and that's really like the, what led my boys into it is because they did parkour first. Oh, wow. And so they, they got real in tune with like their body and then jumping and flipping. And they were like real interested in that. And then the other coach was like, Oh wow, you'd be good at this. And we have a team and kind of like ushered them in that way. And then they, you know, they liked it and, and enjoyed it. And so now you're seeing a lot more boys, I think, um, finding their way into that have, kind of gymnastics. Have you guys ever trained gymnasts? Like, you know, like teenage gym? Mm -hmm. Like, if you, you, have you? Mm -hmm. I mean, the strength that, like, I, I train, I'll never forget, I trained a 14 year old female gymnast, and the strength that she possessed was uh, eerie, yeah. to say the least. I remember she did pull ups. Yeah. She's a 14 year old girl doing pull ups. And she did pull-ups at this speed, like this. It's so rad. Like, like it was yeah. like this. And her legs were straight out in front That's of her. That's why I think it's such a <laughs> such a. I, mean, right I can't now, wait to watch yeah. whatever your boys end up doing over the next five to ten years because I've always said, like, if I were to... It's got to be the best planet, general sport to it start is. with, right? It's not yeah. even... I don't even think there's anything close to it because yeah. of the, the, the proprioception point that you made. It's just overall body, body weight, stability, yeah. control, range of motion. I mean, you just... You get all of it um, with, that, with that sport, and that just... That's the foundation to every sport. The more body awareness, control, stability that you have in any sport, it's 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 a it's yeah. Positive. You're looking at uh, every plane of, mo of of movement, right? You're looking at strength, stability, balance, um, deceleration, deceleration, acceleration, control, yeah. body awareness. Like all these closed chain, you know, yeah. movements. Like it's it's got to be the best general sport to prepare you to develop. Because here's the thing that. It was who do we have on the show where he talked about how um, they did studies on kids in sports and they found that up to a certain age, kids that played a lot of sports, West, Chad did, Wesley Smith, yes, okay, yeah. and they did better Jogging later at trained. their specific sport versus the kid that always. So in other words, you take two twins, identical circumstances, and let's say both of them eventually want to become professional baseball players. One of them only plays baseball from an early age on. The other one plays like fifteen different sports or a bunch of different things, 
and then later on starts to focus on baseball. The one that started out playing tons of different things does better. And that's because yep. of the general uh, kinesthetic intelligence that the brain develops. And the variables you're not going to re yeah. receive and try and overcome, you know, from those other sports that are going to pre present that to you. So it's like you may be good, but you're just good in that narrow, linear uh, sport. Well, it's, it reminds me of how kids can learn languages and not have accents. They could speak them all fluently up to a certain age. And then after that, you always have an accent. Mm -hmm. The brain's ability to yeah, adapt bad. to that kind of intelligence, which is like body kinesthetic, you know, type intelligence at certain ages is like profound. And so you want to develop it all and then focus it uh, later on. You know, yep. It's pretty awesome. Off subject, but I, you, uh, for some reason talking, to you just made me, I've been meaning to ask you, uh, did you, f have you found the show on Apple yet called Silo? Silo? No, yeah. I haven't. Oh, oh is boy, it? that's what? for that's for both of you two. Oh, Especially yeah? You. yeah, it's a sci-fi. Oh, sick. It's a sci-fi. It's a new Apple show. It's only got two episodes out. The third one is fr about? Friday. So, it, oh, I, I can share without ruining or spoiling it because it opens up like this. It's basically this underground silo that was created, and everybody is inside of it. And that and that and it starts off with we don't know how it was. They have like this mantra. They say we don't know who built it. We don't know how we got here. We don't know this. Oh, oh wow! And, and so it's and then and they have a, a camera to outside, and you can see how bad outside is. So everybody is. They just stay there. They, yeah, they stay there, and they ha and you can. There's like some religious elements of what, how they create kind of religion, oh. how they create like this whole structure. Wow. Yeah, that sounds cool. Dude. Yeah, it's pretty cool so far. So I, I like mean, there's like a psychological component. I mean, but. one here's my my critique on sci-fi like uh, I've, I've started many like I, I got into that wolves one you guys did for a little while oh, so, I love that show. like so many of them can really pull me in like because the idea is really good and then it they jump the shark or they go yeah, too yeah. far or gets get or they or, they, or they, gets cheesy or, that's it I sci-fi yeah. that depends too much it's on hard to draw effects. way out yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, you still have to have a good story. And that's why I think you guys will like this because it's not a special effect thing at all. It's more like a, like a, I, like imagine if a nuclear thing went off, right? Yeah. And that we all like like it's we, like a philosophical conundrum. Yeah, and then and then also like like how we would. Uh, like if you have like a an old piece like a like a a Pez thing or like an old like any, they call it relics like they're illegal you can't have any old knowledge wow. old wow. stuff that ties to old knowledge to, so they could re kind of recreate. so I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm, I don't even have I've never seen this I have no idea what it's about but it sounds to me like at the end there's gonna be a like a spoiler where it's like a <laughs> M Night Shyamalan twist yeah there's a or... twist where it's like they're they're just it's... an experiment. And they're being watched. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's actually not good, bad outside at all. Yeah, that's yeah. I, mean, I don't that's, know. That's, they've done that two times, so hopefully they don't. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's I mean, it's only two episodes in. It's definitely got me. I could actually convince my wife to watch it, which is like so hard to get her to watch a sci-fi. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because it's not super sci-fi. It's just it is yeah. futuristic in the sense that it's. I'm gonna it, watch it. Yeah, I, I, I want to hear what you guys think, and we can kind of speculate on We've it. Been it watching. sounds really cool. That was like that one. I forget the name of the show, but it was just the concept of it was so interesting. Where. Uh, he would show up to work and then they would basically like erase. Oh, that's the, so that was when I started watching. I couldn't stay with it. Okay. That's the other Apple one. That's, um, Oh, you guys said, talked about this. Yeah. It was yeah, really they, they erase your mind every single, every single day after you go to work yeah. there or whatever like that. Yeah. So you, so yeah, he would go to work and then he had all these interactions at work and, um, really like rise, he went into the elevator, would come back up and then it would just completely delete all of that memory. Yeah. Uh, and then would just go on about his day. So it's like, basically you never really feel like you're working. Did you stick um, with that? Did you stick yeah. it through? Oh, you did I watched stick. the whole thing. Oh, okay. So I didn't stick. Do you guys know how they, do you guys, that I mean, it's kind of similar. Do you guys know how they did, they developed, I might've even said this on the show, how they created the, the, the first atom bomb. They, uh, they, it was such a top secret thing. They had to compartmentalize it. And with, each, they couldn't know exactly what they were contributing to. or So not one person knew enough mm -hmm. to figure it out. So basically. I thought I heard that that's mm -hmm. kind of where that this story came from, oh, okay. is that concept of that idea. So, there it is. Severance. Severance, oh, severance. yes. Yeah. You guys did talk about that. That was a great so, show. What got, me, what got me to watch the, this, this silo one, that, it's got a great, great actors. There's a ton of good, good actors in it, and, and it's Apple. Apple's done quite a few shows I've liked, and so I'm like, all right, let me give it a try. Cool. Uh, I tricked Katrina. I didn't even tell her what it was. Like, I know if I told her sci-fi, <laughs> she wouldn't watch it. I'm like, yeah, just watch this movie. And then it opens up. She thought, it was, is this a scary movie? I'm like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> It'll be fine. It <laughs> you would have watched it anyway. Yeah, I was scary. like, you know, I would have watched that. So, yeah. But it got, it got her, so I'm like, yes, we can watch oh, this kind of somewhat. Scratch my itch, dude and Dune 2 is coming out. Yes. Oh, Excited about wait. that. Yeah, so, speaking of psychological stuff, so I, I have a question for you guys. It, it, obviously, we can get connected to things because 
of childhood. So it brings up different feelings and emotions. Or I t- we talk about this with food. Like you might have a, a food that you really like, but the food itself objectively doesn't taste good. It's just you remember eating it when you were a kid during certain times or whatever. Do you guys have music? That's like that for you, where you listen to a song and because it's connected to a movie or something that you watch or whatever, mm-hmm. that it just, for whatever is invoked crazy. We, didn't we kind of talk about this a little bit? We were trying, I think we were speculating on what was more powerful, smell, sight, like sound, uh, like uh-huh. a, because I, I, I said that. For invoking emotion? Taste. Yeah. Oh boy. Remember, music has got to be one of I think music, I really do. Like I, there, you can play a song that that's f- from my childhood. Like, yeah. Uh, we've, like in, anything Cindy Lauper. Like, <laughs> immediately. <laughs> dude, I'm just telling <laughs> you guys. Dude, well, like, like songs, songs. Like Goonies. You remember the Goonies song? Yeah. song? That's yeah. Cindy Lauper. So I mean like like you could say, uh, here's a random song, but memorable for everybody. Uh, Informer by Snow. Yeah. Remember that song? Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. I, so I can, I have a, I have a <laughs> like vivid, I have a vivid memory of me. Like I have to be in what grade? I'm like fourth, fifth grade, somewhere around there. I don't know at that age of like loving that song. So, and, and uh, back when you used to record core view because that's being in my doughboy pool my vi- my radio being out yeah. in the summer and that and yeah. that song comes on you run out and, and jump out of the pool slide across the deck and <laughs> hit, hit record. record and play the yeah so I, like so that's how like that's like i the oh. day before i couldn't tell you what happened the day after i couldn't tell you what happened but that moment that song i can i can remember so, that moment so i'm gonna yep. tell you guys why and I'm, I'm bringing this up right so this morning i'm i'm I feel good. Like I had a good weekend and I like, okay, I want to, I want to get a good workout. Right. And I got my usual playlist, rage against the machine or Sepultura or some, you know, you know, metal or whatever. I'm like, you know what? I haven't listened to Rocky soundtrack in a little while. <laughs> so I found on YouTube the it has every Rocky montage from the first one to the last one. Right. So oh, it's like, it's like a 20 something minute, like video of all this training, bro. Nothing. Did you, you hurt yourself? Listen, okay. I, told my wife, I said, if I'm ever stuck under a car and you need me to lift the car <laughs> to save myself or someone, you just play, play Rocky, this. Dude. No defibrillator, just, you know, <laughs> Rocky music. Hey, literally, hey, literally <laughs> this is hilarious. I'll work out and I'll get emotional listening to music. Yeah. Like, I gotta, like, wipe my face real quick. Oh, it's making me, I'm getting the feels right now. Oh, that's why I showed you guys that one. So, and then what happened, I was working out, The first, it played the first couple. So it goes from Rocky 1, Rocky 2. And there's that scene in Rocky 2 that I've talked about so many times where Adrian wakes up from the coma. Mm-hmm. And she's like, just win. And then the music starts, bro. I swear to God. I so almost, do you? I okay. Broke the so okay. To, keep, to go deeper for? down the rabbit hole of your question, so do you think that there there's multiple things at play here? It's not just the song, but it's also the time in your life totally. when that moment crosses, totally. right? Because I know that for sure. Uh, that same week, right, where I I you know come sliding in to record yeah. Informer, there had to been you know five other songs that I can't recall right now, but for some, and so was it just a beautiful day and it's summertime for me? It's, and you gotta it's like, like it's, the song. I'm happy in my yeah. my life yeah. at the time. So the and, song itself, you have to like. It's got to be attached to like some kind of a memory or feeling, especially in childhood, because yeah. those tend to get imprinted and burned into your mind. Uh, so it's a combination of those. So obviously for me, Rocky, I identified with Rocky, right? Yeah. Uh, then it was the training scene. He's fighting the Russian or he's fighting Apollo. And it's like, ah. Uh, and then I like the music on top of it. So you combine all those things. And Do you I have any others or is that the only one uh, you have? I mean, Rage Against the Machine is and, and uh, um, uh, Metallica, Master of Puppets, specifically that song. Those are the first... So, like groups that I specifically listen to to work out to. Yeah. Master yeah, Puppets. Keep, 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 I always like, have a, a soft spot for ACDC. Okay. So like we used to come out to most of the athletic events that I competed in, especially football. We would come out from the woods to Hell's Bells, and you know, oh, we'd, so if I just we'd play scare that right the now. shit out of the you know, <laughs> just coming out in our black uniforms and like you know, mean mugging everybody. So that was a good one, and then the other one was just funny because like Thunderstruck is kind of part of that's like basketball for me, but uh, it, it it actually got a new association because uh, Everett, my youngest, he was like down in his crib and he was just I don't know, not even one yet, or maybe he was he was probably even one. Uh, but he was like, his hands were on, on the crib and I, we were upstairs and we could hear him going, humming. Ah, ah, <laughs> yeah. ah, ah, ah. He couldn't even say a word yet. Yes. And he's like, see, 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 I was like, I'm winning. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It was oh, great. You have, you have Doug, do you have song, like songs like that? I name a song and you'd be like, you could take you back to a moment like that. Yeah. I mean, for example, even like take your breath away from Top Gun. I remember uh, exactly uh, when I saw song. that movie. Uh, I watched it in Idaho of all places. I was out there for the summer uh, yeah. and uh, yeah, it happens a lot. 
Something that happens to me, though, I don't know if it happens to you, is sometimes I don't know what's causing this, but I'll remember a specific time that has no significance whatsoever. I'll just be thrown back into a specific time. From in a the, song? No, in the past. I don't know if it's a smell oh, it's or a, it's a sound. Oh. I don't know, but it's like the most obscure, random thing uh, that I can't even explain. Yeah, I, I so know. this like, is this is my point of like vu, if there's other th- other back. things or there's like, other is it, factors. Like, yeah, I would smell, think. sight. Like for me, there's like I and I there's a lot of my childhood that I actually is is blank for me. But I have these moments in time that I remember, and it's almost always connected to a song. Mm-hmm. I there's so many like random. We could go down the list of things that were popular in the 80s and 90s, and for the most part, if you name a song, I yeah. bet you I can go like I can name a time where like that's what I remember uh, listening to. The that only the other f- comparable would be like the smell of bagel dogs. Yeah, that really gets me like one very specific <laughs> spot. Like I was at my friend's house. His <laughs> mom like didn't make his bagel dogs, did <laughs> you know, They're really big into Costco. It was like first coming out here. Yeah. It was like bagel bites and uh, bagel dogs. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, was, yeah, no, I have, there's one. God, who is uh, PM Dawn? Remember them? <clears throat> there was a song from them. It was the first time I danced with a girl. That, that song came on. Yeah, so forever said, I'll listen to that song and be like, oh, I remember when uh, I danced with, you know, I'm not going to say her name, but I remember, <laughs> <laughs> I remember, remember the first time you danced with a girl, you're like, she likes me. Yeah. She didn't like me. Well, I thought she did though, but she did it. I'm trying to remember. See, I can't remember a first dance right now. I'm trying to remember a first, uh, first time dancing with a girl. With you said, one. now you said you have a lot of blank spaces. Have you ever tried to like go back and see if you can remember them or do you, cause obviously that's either trauma or whatever. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I mean, so and like I would totally do that exercise, right? If we sat MDMA down and you're like, all right, Adam, like, I would do like, I'm not, I'm not afraid to do lasers. What do you say? Last yeah. Time? The MDMA laser, laser magnets might work. <laughs> <laughs> Try it out, dude. <laughs> so check your MDMA lasers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I would, I would like, at least if we were all sitting down, we're like, Hey, take back. I would totally do that exercise. Like, Is I'm, it a block of time? Like, like, can you think back and be like, wow, from this age to this age, it's blank. No, it's 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 moment it, long moments of time within all those times. Does that makes sense? Because I can I can recall something that goes way back, right? But then again, then there'll be like y- a year of like nothing, and then there'll be uh, there'll be stuff wow. that I can recall, and then like a year of nothing. And I, I you know, I, I I guess I if uh, I I tried really hard, I could probably come up with somewhat time frames, and but not not vivid, like not wow. without probably. You know what's down crazy about like that a, is that they're there. They're still there, right? And mm. they're still running. This is what yeah. the shitty. This is the the great the, the like the prevailing theory, is it still runs the operations behind, sure. behind the scenes. So you're not aware of it, but it's still you know making you feel particular ways or operate in other ways. Pretty oh wild, yeah, dude. yeah. There, I wish I remember what I just shared with Katrina just recently, but I had a moment with like my son where it's like there was obviously a default thing that I had felt that would caused me to react a certain way mm. with him that, and it was like oh wow that took me it, until that situation happened with him i ha- i hadn't recalled that until that so th- you see those happen all the time bro you know what i've been doing i've been uh uh I've, so social media is a is a you know obviously good and bad and what i what for, who said this it might have been gary v he's like he's like everybody says social media is terrible this is what you do follow people you want to follow like posts that are oh, that yeah. you want to see more of and the algorithm will change okay so i did this I've been following more like parenting, uh, family type uh, pages and stuff. So I'm getting all these wonderful like psychologists on raising kids and parents posting things. And I'm getting, but I'm also getting these videos that are making me so emotional. There's one I shared with you guys. I know it messed up Doug when I shared it to you guys, but it was talking about how this guy's talking and it shows pictures of kids or videos of kids. And it's like, oh, you've got this chubby, cute little baby. And then they're gone. But that's okay because they're replaced by this toddler that – you know, ask the most interesting questions, but then they're gone and it's replaced and it goes through all the stages. And then one day they walk out of the house and then they're all gone, whatever. And I'm like, Oh, God, you know? <laughs> I sent it to Doug. Cause he's got one close to age. Like I do where they're, about you know, to you just, you just touched on something that I think is a really, a really important point to make because, uh, and I think I'm, I'm guilty of saying, you know, blanket statements like, Oh, social media mm-hmm. is such a cesspool. It's such a, you know, and like kind yep. of, you know, um, harping on how, how shitty social media is. But the truth is it, it feeds me what I'm clicking on and I'm liking it's and what I'm paying mirror, attention. It's a big mirror, isn't it? It is. And so, you know, hey, if you want all positive affirmation stuff, spiritual stuff, like ha- good stories. Follow like, those. Follow all that stuff. Yeah. You want a bunch of superficial things that are fake and, you know, people that are arguing and debating the left or the right. Like, if you want all that stuff, well, then like and pay attention to that stuff. And so... 
I mean, the the thing is, it is a you know an AI algorithm machine. It doesn't know you know what you want like you feed it that information so if you think it's a bunch of crap all mm -hmm. time well <laughs> what are you what are you clicking on you linking and engaging uh, conspiracy theory and what's fun, yeah. what's crazy about it is what i'm realizing is just as effective as social media is at making you feel like shit because you don't look perfect or making you feel inadequate or comparing yourself to, do to the other positive people, it's doing that for me. Yeah. So like there's there's, there's, there's 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 been lots of these posts that i'm seeing or these reels where they're talking about how you know, kids can be stressful when they're little and they leave messes, but you know, and it's kind of helping you reflect and reframe things. And there was this one where this guy's talking and you see him walking through the house and he's just, there's messes, right? Cause this is what kids do. They leave messes everywhere. And he goes, there's going to be a day one day when I, I, I I'm going to wish I could come back to be to a mess in the middle of these messes or whatever. <laughs> and it's it, like, it's working on me. Like I'm at home and I'm finding myself more calm and accepting of the, of the chaos and more like, wow, I better yeah. soak this in right now because this isn't going to be round for very long and as you know chaotic as it is like i'm gonna wish for it to come back at some point but it does it affects you one way or the other so back to your point adam make the algorithm work for you it'll it'll be i, I it'll actually be effective. I, I do think this is the future of social media for a lot of us is i think that one i think apps in the future will start to create i think the, the market will demand yeah the ability to uh, set your own uh, filtrations and stuff like that. So I do think that that's so like, I want algorithm that does this, this, and yeah, that. Yeah. I think that would be amazing. Yeah. So yeah. I do think that there's going to be apps in the future that do that. Regardless, I think the end consumer is, is becoming more and more informed that how they have more power and control than they think they do in that by the mm -hmm. way they like and engage in things. And so I do think the future of social media, because we, because we, we've already, we've already seen the kind of like, I don't know the trend of it getting crazy. And then I already feel like the generation coming up is more privy to this and it's becoming uh, less cool to post all the time, less cool to be or on they're your- they're just more aware of what it is and what it can do and what it can't do rather than being this like thing that they're just distracted by constantly. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. It's funny. So because I'm following these pages, I'm getting- and I'm also following health and fitness stuff, but along the lines of stuff that is interesting to me. So I don't care about flexing pictures and stupid stuff like that. Like I like science- and I like the psychological aspect of, of some of these things. Well, there was this one uh, post by this, I don't remember who they were, but they were talking about how gaining, and I've, I've noticed, I've seen this before with clients. It's not super common, but I've seen it. Where some people gain body fat as a, it's like body armor, as a way to protect themselves. And there was this woman talking about how she had been uh, sexually assaulted when she was younger. And so she got, you know, as, as she got older, she gained all this body fat. And every time she tried to lose weight, a man would compliment her or somebody would, you know, oh, give wow. her attention and it would Trigger. make her feel threatened oh, wow. and she'd gain lots of weight again. Wow. And she goes, it wasn't That's until she tough. realized that she was protect using this as like a shield to protect mm -hmm. herself that she was able to lose the weight finally and keep it off. Oh, her. I mean, I would make the argument that yeah. most big Jack buff bodybuilder dudes are the same way. Oh yeah. I mean, that's normally a just a big ass fake shell of an yeah. insecure boy who's still got a bunch of stuff inside totally. that he, he doesn't hasn't hasn't worked on or doesn't want to work on, and totally. so he has created this massive mm -hmm. shell to to protect him from that little boy. Totally, totally. Yeah. Hey, speaking along along those lines of muscle, um, I you know I want to address this because I think uh, misconceptions in 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 the in the fitness space can really prevent people from pursuing things that could benefit them tremendously. And I thought of one this morning. There's this huge misconception that resistance bands are really only good for beginners or as a convenient way to work out because you don't have access to a gym. Yeah, or therapy or something. Or therapy. Like that. Right. Now that's true. They are good for those things, but they're equally, if not more valuable for the advanced athlete. And this is what a lot of people don't realize. They mm -hmm. think bands, oh, bands, I'll just go lift weights. Weights are weight. Bands, if you use them properly because of the way they apply resistance, because the resistance is progressive, and because you, yeah. can, you can change the angles, bands are one of the best advanced training tools you'll find anywhere, hands down. Yeah, and the, the stimulation you can give your muscles and the volume you can add yeah. without a lot of the damage. Yeah. Like, There's so much benefit there in itself to getting good at a lot of these movements and also getting your muscles to respond you know, even more um uh intensively i should say yeah. there's a reason why and i hate to give this clown any uh you know any sort of attention or not but there's a reason why the dr axe guy has got so much attention from his whole 
band, like X bar oh, thing. Yeah. yeah, his X bar or whatever it is like that is because, and which is like many things that go viral or gain tons of traction is there is some truth in part of the message or right. else it, like if it wasn't, if people weren't doing it and seeing great results from it, right. it wouldn't go anywhere. So but it's just typical. It's like throw away your weights now. It's only bands. You know, it's far. like it's too far. Come on, it's a yeah. tool just like the rest of it. Which is unfortunate because it seems like that's what ends like you know. And I don't want also our friend, uh, you know, Doctor uh, Saladino, right? Like yeah. his hit, like the same thing with the keto thing. It's like there's tremendous value. There's a reason why he got so popular. There's a reason why there's helped so many people. But it's not like throw out carbohydrates completely, or that's not for anybody, or all these things are bad. Right. It's like there's so, there's something to take from that. I feel the same way about the bands. That's why I was using that as a comparison, is because you have this dude who's super popular who's trying to say that everything else is a waste. Just follow this. The reason why he's got any sort of traction is because the people that are that are drinking the Kool Aid and following his advice are seeing great results yep. from the bands, and that's why there's a unique profile to bands that you won't find with other forms of resistance. It's the the resistance profile. Just and hit this too, where you can add tremendous volume and frequency because it doesn't damage the body. So you could practice a lot. It also, it's very hard and not, and not, not impossible, but it's hard to hurt yourself with bands. In fact, if you band loaded a squat with the same resistance you would find with a free weight bar, and let's say you have knee pain or hip pain, the bands wouldn't hurt your hip and knees like the barbell would. So it's got this unique profile that and so I'll say this. That constant resistance. For this, for the advanced lifter, if the advanced lifter, you've been working out for a while, do a cycle of just band training. Watch what I'm, and see what I'm talking about. Go back to lifting weights. Tell me you didn't get stronger and build yeah. more muscle. Yeah. Yep. You'll get some of those, uh, those crazy It'd be a good challenge for sure. It's, yeah, it's a terrible misconception. By the way, this is why West, West Side Barbell became so dominant. They're one yep. of the first powerlifting groups to use bands. Band, they learned from the Soviets. and chains. Yep. They're, they're yeah. sort of the pioneers. That's right. Anyway, I want to f ask you, Justin, about the star-nosed mole. You've been having that up there for a while. <laughs> this is more is conversations this? I have with my kids late at night before I put them to sleep. Okay, and this was brought on by them, not me, but um, was looking up uh, fun facts about animals and all this. And like be beyond the fact that a star-nosed mole looks weird, right? It has this like you weird- No. It's it, a weird Almost like ass. seeing an enemy looking like nose. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, on a mole, just, yeah, on a mole. It's like a okay. weird looking nose. I guess it's supposed to feel out in the dark, right? For yeah, stuff or something. I don't know. Okay, so, and so uh, so this is a specific type of a mole. Yeah, right? look, so at, look at their nose. Right? It looks like an alien. Watch. Oh wow! Yeah. yeah, look how weird. So we're just like looking up like cool, weird looking animals, but then of course, you know, Everett like stumbles across like a little more facts to it too. It also hits the profile of like one of the weirdest penises you'd ever see. Okay. Yeah. Which is uh, <laughs> something that... <laughs> What's weird about its penis? It, it has like four uh, attachments. What? It's, so it's like no, one, but it has like four... Penis. Yeah, please. Just type it please in. Please do. It's, I, you're, it's an animal. Come it, on. You're, it's you're it's an animal. I'm, 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 already yeah, just pretend you're you already showed it. Showed it? It's not his first time looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all... <laughs> hey, back again, Douglas. Why is that <laughs> star nose mole pour come up, Doug? There it is. Oh, what? you wanted to see it. There it is. Whoa. See? One, two, three, four. And... I have it's no idea what the penis. Yeah, what, what the advantage is there, you like why it needs to do that. Out only by but it only uses one of the areas, I think. So well, the weird. others are just just in case. Yeah. 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 Well, okay, here's the thing. There's a lot of weird penises in the world and animals. Yeah. But there's penises all over. So we yeah. all come from a common ancestor. Right. right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. anyway. Did you uh, did you look up okay. why did you find out why? <laughs> no. Only using half at a time. I'm not sure why. Half at a time. Yeah. You guys save the other two for later? I guess so. Because mm. I mean the other one's the mallard, I think, that has like the corkscrew looking one that's like really weird. Well, they can't I, I, okay, then this is all back to like drawing them in clouds and you <laughs> yeah, know. What, are you, stuff what like are you and your kids doing? I mean, who, up, who, who's not curious though? You know, yeah. in the animal world, like, you know. There should be like a sort of a, a scale of like you know weird to like kind of normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'll awesome. create I'll create a website. For Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Justin. <laughs> don't, don't worry, you guys. Hey, we got to give that guy a shout out that we were all talking. Oh about. yeah. Hey, you know what's weird? You sent it to the group. Literally this morning, I saw. Uh, a post of uh, of that person. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. it must. Have, it's, he he popped up in my feed. I clicked on it. What's I know he's weird is you don't know what he looks like. He's. I know. That's, that's he kinda, never shows. That's his why face. I also thought his, his page was kind of cool, right? I like stuff like that. It was. Uh, I got it right. He's here. connected to the jailhouse guys. His which, name is Tom. Uh, Tom underscore 
uh, Haviland. H A V I L A N D. Dude is what strong. The strongest as dude fuck. I've seen. I mean, on like any anything. Like, like he's a he's a like crazy strong. Like yeah. crazy moose strong. Like deadlifting a thousand pounds of straps and squatting on you know, with like six seven hundred pounds. Bro, he pounds. snatched like a four hundred pound bar and then Zercher squatted yeah, it. Dude. Yeah, he's, well, like what? <laughs> Yeah, and like the acceleration was yeah. Like, but my favorite some, part is some ass. contractor boots and jeans. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it looks like he just finished work. Yeah. He's out in the backyard working out. <laughs> yeah. That's I a mean, strong. He's, so he's a monster. Yeah, that's cool. Give him a follow. Check this out. Studies show that sleeping in a cool environment helps you fall asleep faster. It also helps cue your brain to fall asleep. Stay asleep improves muscle recovery. It also increases deep and REM sleep. Now, here's the deal. There's a company uh, called Sleep Me that makes a pad that goes over your mattress that is controlled with an app. It'll control the temperature of your bed, making it as cool as you want to give you better, more restful sleep. This is a game changer. It's one of the most effective things I've ever used to improve my sleep. Go check them out. Go to sleep.me forward slash pump 30 and get 25% off any of their sleep systems. All right, back to the show. First question is from Joe S. Zadok Fitness. When doing dumbbell pullovers in phase three of anabolic, the video shows the guy doing them lying lengthwise on the bench. I saw on Adam's YouTube video with Dr. Jordan Shallow that they are lying across the bench. Is there a difference? Oh, or yeah. One a of them will way? build muscle, the other one won't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of them makes you lose muscle. <laughs> That's it. Uh, they're both they're both correct. Yeah. Uh, but going across the bench allows you yeah. to lower your hips lower than the bench and get more of a stretch, uh, at the, at the bottom position. Yeah, which is so, ideal. Yeah. So I would say the cross bench option is probably more advanced. It's definitely more advanced. Yeah. Although they're both good. Um, I personally prefer the cross bench. So Same. you could do either one. I would say they, they're, they're, you, you trade them off whenever I would train a client. If this was the first time doing the exercise, I would do it lengthwise. But then as they got better, I would have them do the cross uh, bench version. Yeah, I just always I find the cross bench like you know I I set the dumbbell right next to me. I get in position. I yeah. find scooping it over, versus if you were to do it this way, you would actually like lay down, flop it. Yeah, and yeah. Then, you'd like rest it on your chest and then have yeah, to go up. yeah, yeah. So. I just I've always liked the cross. I actually even I even taught like I guess the where I would go lengthwise is like like in like I would say for like a starter program like for our like yeah. really beginner clients that li real light they're doing it. I'm just like working on the. That's movement. the other thing too. If you get because you can get really strong with the pullover. If you use a lot of weight, it'll you'll have to anchor your feet because it'll mm -hmm. pull me off the bench. But when I go across, I can drop my hips at the same time. Yes, and counterbalance. Yes, it, yes. So. so it's but I mean, really splitting hairs as far as like like one is technically better or worse. By the way, a pullover, uh, very few movements work in that range in that type of plane of movement. I think it's a fundamental muscle building exercise. Used to be considered. One of the best muscle building exercises, if you look at bodybuilding in the 50s and 60s, they would actually compete yeah. for barbell pullover, you know, how much they well, can do. Including lat and tricep and that's and really unique in chest. Like those are, that's a really <laughs> unique combo. It, it is. But also um, it's an underrated shoulder I mobility was exercise. Just gonna say, I was yep, just yep. going to say it would make my top five of most underrated movements. And that's because... 90% of my clients that were 70 plus years old, one of the one of the most common things of all of them is they lo lose that ability to just raise their yep. arm over their head, right? Straight up. Uh -huh. yep. And and a lot of that is because we we don't even even in a the gym, there's not a lot of exercises that put you in that position. Mm -hmm. Lat pull down at, at best and pull-ups. Other than that, not a lot of exercises kind of put you in that position where this really challenges that. And so it would be in, I was like later on in my career became an exercise that like if I had an advanced stage client, that was like a, a, so, a must exercise. So I learned us. this from a physical therapist. So uh, to what Adam's saying, sometimes people lack the ability to lift their arm overhead because they'll feel pain. But if they're opposing and pulling down while being lifted up into position, they can do it. So to give an example, you know, I had a client had bad, you know, kind of had a frozen shoulder for a while and working on shoulder mobility and she couldn't straighten her arm up off her head. It really hurt. But then I got a pole or like a like a, uh, a broomstick. I had her hold on to it. And I said, just pull down on this while I press it up. Just enough to create some tension. And then I could straighten her arm out so I could get it in that position. A pullover does something similar. It allows the the arm to go straight up above and even, even behind your head. But because you're opposing the resistance, 
it tends to put the scapula and everything in a better position. So it allows you to get into a range of motion that you normally wouldn't be able to get into mm -hmm. because of the fact that you're opposing the resistance. So this is why it's such a great shoulder mobility exercise for some people. Yeah, this is what you find with mobility once you get really good at it, when you can actually create that kind of muscle tension to get in further ranges yes. of motion. But that's that's a great tool to be able to provide to get you to that point. Totally. Next question is from Colin Self. If you had to build a personal training business from scratch, how would you do it? You know what? Okay, so first off, I'll say a good thing about personal training certifications. They've gotten good in the sense that, and they've gotten, they've gotten good for a while now where they can really teach movement and they can teach assessments and they can teach exercise technique. And some of them are even good with exercise programming, not a lot, but some of them, but the place where they lack completely is in teaching trainers how to build their business. Mm -hmm. I used to get all these really educated trainers that would come work for me with multiple certifications and they just couldn't build a business for the life of them because nobody ever taught them. So that's how I'd, I'd have to spend all my time teaching them and training them on how to do that. Now, we work with NCI. And one of the reasons why we work with NCI is they are an online certification, uh, nutrition certification course, but they also have a business building side where they teach you how to build your business. So if if I, if I you if, some, if a friend of mine came to me and said this, that's where I would point them. I'd say, go to NCI, go through their business building course because it's very, very uh, complete. Um, they really walk you from where you're at to where you want to be, and they have a, a great track record. Oh, so. I don't think they're just complete. I think they're the best in the business. I really do. I mean, that's obviously a main reason why we had partnered up with them is I think Jason's done an incredible job teaching people how to apply like the stuff that you learn. Like, there's a lot of things you can learn in national certifications. You can hire a um, you know, mastermind group where you have a mentor and they, you know, even us, we can sit here and preach to you all day long. Like, Oh, you should do this. And Oh, you should do that. Um, but Jason's team is very tactical about like, like step one, you're going to do X, Y, and Z. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that you've completed that, now we want you to do boop, 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 boop. Now that you complete that, now we do this. And then they, and then they, then you get to go and like measure. Okay. Now we want you to run this, see what happens. And you go like, Oh, holy crap. I got the most clients. Of it. Almost everybody I know that we've sent this way and gone through their courses. That has been their experience. Whether you are a brand new trainer or you're an experienced trainer, all of them reported back like, Oh, when I did their, when I went through it, I got more clients than I've ever, ever had before. And so I really do believe that they're the they're the best in the business. Yeah. Well, they flipped it on its head because now they teach you how to actually like make money, make a career out of it instead of like trying to get educated, eventually figure out you know the the business side of it and uh, work your way to that that point. But to be able to figure out exactly like okay, you know how am I going to structure this in a way too where I'm going to be able to have sustainable income and I can actually like increase that and then you know further my skills, get more educated like. You know, that's that's a, a greater advantage of going that direction than just kind of just going the personal train route. Yeah. Now, another another thing you could do, and we've recommended this before to trainers, if you're a brand new trainer, um, there's a lot of value in working at a big box gym. Mm -hmm. A lot of value. I think it would be a mistake for a brand new trainer, unless you had a really good mentor, <clears throat> you had really good training, and you had somebody there kind of helping you. It'd be a mistake to go to a uh, like a private studio or try and just start from scratch and build a business. Like- Good luck. But you go to a big box gym, they have systems in place, they have leads, and there's other trainers that are going to be more experienced than you that you can learn from in those air in, in a big box. So I think a big box is a great place to build and learn how to build mm -hmm. a personal training business. And then from there, then you can go and grow and do other things, but really prove yourself in that model first. And now you have maps programs, right? So that, that would have been something huge that I could yeah. at least have a baseline and foundation of, to then modify with each individual client. Totally. Uh, so it, it, it would actually help structure a lot of, you know, the rest of your year based off of like, uh, you, you know, utilizing that and also customizing it. The thing I want to add to the, because we do, we give the advice to work in a big box gym a lot and uh, all of us hundred percent agree on that. And, the, the part of that that you want to do in addition to surrounding yourself around these other peers and learning from them and, and others is also ask questions to the the GM and your fitness manager about how the business operates. Like to me, that was one of the most 
valuable things that I got there was not only did I learn, you know, as this young 19 year old boy that was thrusted into this business with everybody who was more educated, more experienced, uh, more fit than I was. And so it was this great learning ground from my peers. But then I also hung around my, my, my fitness manager, my boss all the time. and was like, so curious on like, you know, how much money does our, our gym spend on advertising every single month? And how many people work out in this gym every single day and every single month? And what's a slow month and what's a, a, a good month? And how many like appointments do we see every day? Like, that like if you were if you're trying to scale and build your own business going and working for a commercial sized gym that does millions potentially hundreds of millions of dollars depending on what big box gym you go for uh, there's so much to learn about uh scaling a business through asking questions on how that business operates currently and it gives you a whole different perspective around things that you will then have to learn to do if you're going to build a business because being a successful personal trainer isn't just being educated and good with people and knowing how to sell personal training no, that's like, like you have to do that no yeah you, what. exactly you have to be able yeah. to do that to survive like you better do that <laughs> but if, if most people that ask questions like this or that go to nci like they, they have aspirations to build something like I want to build a business or a company or at least a small business that's successful and makes good money. And if that's the case, when you work at a big box gym, just don't go through the motions of training clients and hanging out with your peers and getting better at training and selling per se, but also learn about the intricacies about the business. And I feel like so many trainers don't do this. It's why when I manage trainers, it would baffle me on so many of them that they they get they get in there for a year or so. They got some clients working for them. They quickly find out, oh, the company takes half of my <laughs> my my hourly and stuff like that. Now they know everything. Yeah. yeah, and oh man, if I just collected all of that, I'd have a successful business. And then they just think, oh, they didn't think about oh a brick and mortar location, the millions of dollars of advertising they're doing, the, the systems, thousands it, thousands yeah. of yeah the thousands of hour uh, of workouts they're having a day, the operations side, like the billing. Like, <laughs> it's if, it's. Literally literally like it's it reminded it reminds me of when you get like a teenager that's like well i could get a job here and make this much the average rent is i could just move out this will be super easy and parents are like okay i'll see you in a few months <laughs> a, totally there's a lot of unknowns you have no idea yeah about. totally yeah. so you work at a big box gym man what at one point whether you're at lifetime crunch 24-hour fitness you name it at one point that was one little gym. Uh -huh. you know, it was that was one guy or girl who had a dream who built that thing that built it into a big franchise or a big company and then built it into hundreds of locations. And so there's so much to potentially absorb and learn while you're there in addition to you're surrounded by let me, let peers. Me, let me just back you up, okay? So we all started in a big box. And if it wasn't for, and we were lucky enough to work uh, in a big box gym that really led the way and in its heyday, had the, some of the best people in the world in the fitness space. The company's changed since then, but back then, 24 Hour Fitness was like, I mean, at the you know, Mark Masteroff at the helm. Like, this was training ground. I only worked there for, th for a few years. But those few years, because after that, I had my own place and all that stuff. But those few years, to this day, there's things that I learned there that, uh, that are a big part of my, my success, a big part of my success. So... Um, we're not just saying this cause we, and we don't work with a big box company or, or, you know, there's no gym that we work with, but it's one of the best things you could do is go there and learn. And if you're in there and you're not taking advantage, like Adam's saying, you are literally, it's the stupidest thing you could do. You, every, there's so mm -hmm. many things around you in a big box gym and so many systems and things you can learn that'll make you successful. Mm -hmm. If you just ask, it's insane. I, you know, I, I hate to keep dragging this on just as a, it's a question I'm, I'm super passionate about because I think a lot of trainers make this mistake is they'll shop gyms their work at and the, the things that make their decision is like, who's going to pay me more money or, you know, what has the coolest equipment? Yeah, what's it's the like, newest looking gym? Yeah, like this, yeah. like, do not think of, like, you're just starting this career. Uh, you're going to, before you become great at it, you're, it's going to be 10,000 hours. So to be like worrying about the the pay of five or 10 or $15 up or down, like that's irrelevant. Like I'm looking for the place where I can learn the most that's in, it. In, in that first five years. Like who can, so for me, when I'm getting interviewed or I'm, I'm looking at gyms, like I'm looking at who's my boss going to be, how is that company ran? How successful is that business? Because uh, yeah, okay. I can make five or 10 more dollars here or there. To me, that is uh, nowhere in comparison as valuable as being able to learn from either someone or learn from a company that has done such a good job in that area because the education you're going to get is going to be invaluable in comparison to you know how much am I going to make or where am I going to get the most amount of clients. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're looking for a place like this. Oh, by the way, NCI, I, I need to mention this. Doug was pulling it up. 
they have this like like boot camp. I think it's free, where they go and they talk about some of the most controversial things in in health right now and fitness. So like cold plunge, testosterone therapy. Uh, there was a couple other things where they go and they dive deep into the science. It's free. Oh, that's way. cool. So whatever. Yeah, I don't a know. Free what, webinar. It's a free webinar. A series of of webinars. Yeah. It's, so it's ncimindpump.com forward slash controversy. This is actually a really cool one. Is the webinar live now or is it going live it's soon? It's going to be live. So they have specific dates you need to attend. Okay. Next question is from D Ebert 184. What are your opinions on ashwagandha? I know most supplements are a scam, but I've read a few clinical trials on it that seem to indicate strong positive effects. Ashwagandha, before we get to the studies, because the studies definitely support its use, but before we get to the studies, ashwagandha is uh, a cornerstone herbal uh, supplement in Ayurvedic medicine. So when you look at different medical practices. So we have Western medicine. Everybody's familiar with Western medicine, but then you have like Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine. Those are two popular alternative forms of medicine. They've been practiced for hundreds or thousands of years. And although they didn't use the scientific method to prove their, their methods or to prove their, their the, the products that you know, the herbs that they use or the treatments that they use because they were around for so long, you're not looking at like 10 anecdotes. You're looking at like, Oh, for a thousand years, people used this herb for libido or this herb for stress or for vitality or for stamina. When you have that much time and it's being used that long, it's like past the test of time. There's going to be some, there's probably some real value. Ashwagandha is one of those things. It's been a cornerstone in, in, in Ayurvedic medicine for a long time, but we also have studies supporting its use. What is it good for? I, I hate to use this term adaptogenic or it's an adaptogen because that sounds so broad and whatever, but literally, literally it improves your body's ability to deal with stress. Mm -hmm. So you hear us on the podcast all the time, talk about, uh, manage your stress. Don't overtrain. If you lose sleep, if your diet is this, if your work is that, and you're not able to adapt and strengthen your body, you can't build muscle. You can't burn body fat because your body's overwhelmed with stress. Well, imagine if, your stress bucket, you could just make the bucket larger. So now you can handle more stress. That's what ashwagandha does. So what do you notice from ashwagandha? Well, studies will show it raises testosterone in men with low testosterone. Studies will show it helps people who have sleep issues get better sleep. It help, it improves strength, athletic performance. There may be some enhanced fat loss effects. So again, it just, it basically enhances your body's ability to adapt. It's one of the few herbs uh, that I'll say from a fitness standpoint that you'll probably notice if you take it, you'll probably notice right. uh, its benefits. I would make the case that that's probably what most people feel when they talk, when they talk about the benefits they feel from the green juice. The, yeah. Mm -hmm. Organifi's green juice. That's one of the main. Ingredients. Yeah. Most yeah. of your good green juices actually have ashwagandha and most people that report back like, Oh, I feel so good when I'm on it. I would probably think that that's from the ashwagandha more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Um, Along the lines of like most supplements are scams. I don't think most supplements per se are scams. You know, there's a lot of bullshit out there. I don't think most, I think most supplements are oversold. Yeah. I think in uh, and, and ashwagandha could fall in that category too. It's, uh, it does have all these great benefits. It is, but if, if it's not, if you haven't addressed the things that we talk about so much on the show with the nutrition, the sleep, the diet, the strength, the good protocol as far as strength training and balance of intensity and stress, all, there's so many other things that move the needle more than any supplement that's out there. That's really what it is. It's not that these supplements are so much scams or they don't work or not this. It's just that they're oversold. People, the, the marketing makes you think that, oh, if I take this, it's going to do this and it's going to give me the results of this picture of this person before and after. And so it's not that it, it doesn't have scientific studies. This but Most supplements it, are, that are on the market that are successful and sold have good scientific studies to support the benefits of it or else it wouldn't get sold and it wouldn't get so popular. So I don't think it's a scam or they don't necessarily not work. It's that they're oversold. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I'll, again, I'll say this again about not all herbs are going to do this for you, but you'll probably tell if you take ashwagandha, mm -hmm. you can, you'll probably notice strength benefits. Uh, you'll notice better sleep. Libido tends to improve and it's, it, and it works equally well for men and for women. So it's, I would say in terms of the herb market, yeah. uh, it's, it's at the top. It's so one of the top. One ones. of the superior ones. I was going to ask about that because there's, you know, within this sort of class, 
Uh, would you say there's probably some mushrooms in this class yeah. as well? And maybe, you know, CBD on some level might fit in this category. But uh, it's an interesting one because you think about uh, what our culture looks like now, society looks like now, and like what we're, what challenges we face all the time. And it's just this inundation of stress and, and like how we're, we're mm -hmm. able to interpret it. Then also how we're able to lower it when we need to lower it. You know, there's practices you can do obviously with, you know, breathing practices like meditation, those types of things. But, you know, maybe this is another intervention that uh, may have some benefit. Yeah. If, if I, if you told me I could only take one plant herb to improve my athletic performance strength, for example, um, and I had, you know, my nutrients were fine. Everything else was fine. Cause that's always first. Uh, I would, I would have to say ashwagandha probably would be the top one. That's the one that I, I would notice the most for sure. Next question is from Lasse Gutu. How do you deal with the negative bullshit from social media? Yeah. We just mm, talked about this in the intro, did, right? Yes. You can change the algorithm. I would have normally said, had you asked me this question six months ago, I would have said, turn it off avoid it only go on when you absolutely have to but i'm now realizing the power can be used for good as well um, and that is literally you go on your social media unfollow the toxic accounts and the crap that you know do this with a good sound state of mind by the way not where you're distracted or whatever because then you'll it'll be hard but go in there and be like okay is this really serving me no is this serving me no is this serving me now and then okay what do i need to look at or look for for, you know, what are pages and things I need to follow that I think will help me and look them up, find good ones and follow, follow, follow. And then the algorithm will change and you'll actually have this really powerful tool that can benefit you versus what we tend to do is we tend to look at people that we compare ourselves to. We tend to get distracted. Uh, we get caught up in the fear mongering. Adam, you mentioned the whole like, you know, political stuff. And, you know, it's like, uh, by the way, studies show that the that these political uh, type of pages and stuff do nothing to convince the other side. But what they do do is they take the side that they're, co they're conveying to the same side and they just make them hate the other side more. Mm -hmm. So they they literally are successful at making people hate each other more and they bring nobody over or bring nobody together. Yeah. So those pages should be not followed, yep. like not followed at all. Um, and you change, you'll change the algorithm. It'll become this, this great. Now when you, you know, when I go through the feed now, I see like stuff that's really uplifting and, and yeah. beneficial. I'm due for a spring cleaning. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's one of those things that uh, at the beginning of this year I did that. And then, uh, inevitably some of these pages kind of made their way back in and you'll know by your Explorer page. <laughs> yeah, Whoa, yeah, this yeah. is, uh, this is enlightening. I it's need to year. reduce some of this content, but yeah, it's, especially the political stuff, it's only going to ramp up with elections and everything coming. So if, I feel like if the majority of people just uh, focused on positive, you know, uh, accounts and, and people doing great things and, and the great uh, examples in the world that we can focus on, that'll help a lot our mental state. I mean, how do you use knives and not get cut? How do you use fire and not get burned? Yeah. It's just another tool yep. that has a, a side of it that can be wielded for bad things and could harm. Um, but yet we use knives and flames for good uh, things, for good things yeah. in our life all the time. And nobody freaks out about yeah. it. You're just, you're aware of how powerful and how dangerous it can be. I think social media is much like this. I think it has lots of positive things to move society forward and to help you, especially if you have a business. And uh, when wielded for good can be an amazing tool. Um, but if you juggle it, like juggling knives or play with fire like an idiot, like you can get burned, you can get cut. The same thing with social media, be aware of that. And so I think if I was in a position where I felt this like negative weight from social media, I'd probably flip my account in uh, private. I would unfollow almost everybody. And then I would go down the path that Sal's saying and literally only follow people that have a positive Puppies. message. <laughs> or, consciously. Yeah. yeah, consciously go after accounts that are going to give me the things that I want to get from social media and only pay attention to the, those things and engage with those pages. And they will continue to yeah. feed you more stuff like that. I think uh, that's the, the idea if this is something that's kind of weighing now on. Now that's 80% of it. Now there's another 20% that I also noticed, which is it'll throw the algorithm will throw suggested reels and posts at you. 
that are, that are resist- outside of resist what, the temptation. What happens is it also the algorithm also picks up on how long you spend looking at a reel or a post. You don't even have to like it. Mm-hmm. If I just hover over something for too long, it's going to send more of that to me. So what's the point here? The point is, because the question is, how do you deal with this? And a lot of people are like, oh my, as if we're out of control. The reason why it feels like we're out of control is because it's very powerful, mm-hmm. but we do have the power. So when you're going through, you you got to set a conscious intention and be and catch yourself. Like you're going through and you're like, oh, what am I doing? Like turn it off. All right. I'm like distracting myself. Or here's a big one for me that I'm really working on is when I'm with people, if I if I get myself on my phone, I check myself like, what am I doing? I'm with people right now. Put this mm-hmm. down. Even mm-hmm. if I just sit quietly, like why am I on my phone? I'm sitting with people right now. Like that's a big one. So I think that distracted kind of numbing scrolling is, you know, the other 20%. So if you do those two things, then you'll get this great algorithm and great post that'll really serve you uh, well. Look, if you like our content, if you want more help with your fitness and health, go to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our fitness guides. We have fitness guides that can help you with all kinds of health and fitness goals. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of weak points and and areas that I struggled with developing for a a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 